Hey y'all, it is Cody from the Keepers of Nerdum. How y'all doing? I wanted to really get into this. I've been pretty excited for this. The one I'm most excited about is definitely Russia, but this is right next to it. Is the World War II U.S. vehicles the middle area because they're they're fascinating to study. And if you'll notice and you're paying attention, there's a lot of Shermans right here because there's a lot of Sherman variants in the U.S. That was their primary vehicle. And so we're going to take a peek through history and time and look at a little bit of these. And the first one we're going to settle in on is boop, 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 the Hellcat. What's funny is the Hellcat in this game is actually very low points cost. Reason being in part is armor. Uh, the armor, according to my tank book it, information, is 7 millimeters, only 0.28 inches, up to 12 millimeters, 0.47, not even half an inch. And so let's let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's show the model in all of its glory. One thing you'll notice is this thing is really big, and I, I think it's it's a little missized because it is. It is massive compared to a Sherman. I, I could be wrong, but that just seems a little ridiculous. Now, that being said, this thing is very, very fast. This thing has 400 horsepower and can get up to 49.68 kilometers an hour, or miles per hour. 80 kilometers per hour is the thing. So overall, really cool model, but uh, kind of bizarre. And if you'll notice, it's... Okay, you look at the model, something about the, the tracks just seem a little bit off place compared to what we're shown here. So let's talk about it. Speed of five, I think that makes a lot of sense with how fast it is. We'll compare it to the Chaffee here in just a little bit. Uh, three, two defense. So it's saying it does have some with there is slope on there. I could I could see probably some justification on a three. The two is saying there is armor, but it's just barely there, which is fair for this vehicle. Uh, six, six, four, not very good against infantry. It does have a 76 millimeter gun. This is from 1944. It is a tank destroyer technically. 14, 12, 10. This thing, gun wise, it, it it works. It's it's definitely accurate there. The high gear too. If this unit makes its entire move along a road, it gets plus two speed. So it's gonna get up to eight speed on a road because it gets a bonus plus one just for moving road to road one time at least. And flanking attack. This unit rolls one extra attack die when attacking a unit's a vehicle's rear. It's only 20 points, and the reason being is. This thing's going to hit hard and could kill even a King Tiger potentially or at least damage it. But you know what's going to happen the turn after you, like after you fire, they're, they're sh turning around and shooting you as well. So they say right here, and this is interesting to note, with a top speed of 55 miles per hour, the Hellcat was the fastest armored fighting vehicle of the war. Uh, again, you know, my, my tank book actually has 49.68, so maybe on road with downhill you know 55 so it's possible but it also would probably like rock everybody inside of it this thing has a crew of five so maybe it is as big as it looks um overall accuracy i think this is very accurate it works this is a thing that's going to destroy whatever it shoots but it's also going to get destroyed in return uh, the one thing to note this in actual world war ii you would have been able to move like a strike and fade would actually make a lot of sense on this type of vehicle especially for this little bugger of how fast it is so because it's gonna the whole idea behind it is not to get hit it's it's shoot and scoot it's get out and and get gone because you're probably gonna die if you don't now the next one this is from i believe the i think it's the base set cannot remember for sure but it should be base set because i mean let's be honest the most iconic vehicle of world war ii in many ways at least for the u.s is the the sherman tank uh, overall, this model is very, very basic. They are an uncommon, so there's definitely several I got a hold of over time. I'm very glad to because they are just your backbone. You you just take a Sherman to put in 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 your back line and and or even your front line to, to screen for your other vehicles to keep them safe from bigger stuff as well. So is this a decent model? Yeah, I mean it looks okay. It's just really, really basic, really generic, but. The uh, M4 Sherman is fascinating because there's there's two different versions. This seems to be the more curved version, so it is probably based on best guess. It looks like a medium tank M4 early production. So let's just look at it for a little bit. Here is its stat card: 21 points, four speed. This thing does have a top speed of 23.60 miles per hour. I uh, this is tough. This is tough just because it that seems mm, I don't know. 
the max speed on a late production is 29.19. So they're probably trying to justify that. 5.4 defense, it has 25 millimeters up to 0.98 minimum to 51 up to 2 inches. Uh, this seems pretty high in the armor department. I don't know if I'd say inaccurate, but it's that's quite a bit. We'll, we'll see kind of what the Chaffee holds up to as well. Uh, 55,000 Shermans, according to this, and variants during the war were produced. And that's uh, twice as many tanks as Germany produced in total during the same period. So pretty interesting. Pretty interesting to note. What's fascinating here is there's no stats here. This has a 997 against infantry, perfect against infantry, and a 1311 9 against vehicles. This is going to be a 75 millimeter gun. This is not the 76.2, I don't believe, because that should be the Sherman Easy 8 that we'll see later on in another video. This thing perfectly represented right there by 75 millimeter. It's it it works. It's fascinating. I think the one question mark would be the the defense and maybe even the speed. But overall, for 21 points, you get what you pay for. It's it's a standard vehicle. Is it going to knock out a King Tiger? It might scratch it when you get up close, but up from long range. Uh, I believe King Tigers have like a seven defense up up top from the front. You, you're not in this game. You're not going to probably hit that. And they're just going to be laughing the entire time as they wreck you. So uh, Sherman is fascinating, and it's I think it's accurately represented overall. The speed and the defense, I would just have some questions on. So let's uh, let's go to the next vehicle. And let me find it in here as well, because I want to make sure we get some good info on it. It is the, uh, the Chaffee tank. And I love this model. I always thought it was a bizarre-looking vehicle in a way. But yet I love everything about it, because it's it's just... It's perfect, and actually my great uncle drove one of these and did some stuff in it as well as Sherman's. And so this is the Chaffee tank, and the model, I just, I love it. It's so simple, and yet so elegant, and yet one thing I'll note is just the front plate, like the, the slope here is just not very sloped. It almost makes it look like there's no front to this vehicle because it's so similar to the back. In, in just the sloping. It's kind of interesting to me, but the the Chaffee was a light tank. It was supposed to be for like scouting, but it also came with a 75 millimeter gun, so it was not unarmed by any means. It has 34.75 miles per hour and went from nine millimeters of 35 inches to 25 millimeters, 0.98 inches, so almost an inch of armor. And this is where, again, it, it gets kind of weird because armor wise we have a speed of five makes sense this thing is very uh very sturdy four three defense um seems a little tough honestly with only having not even an inch of armor seven seven six not very good again to infantry 13 11 10 what's funny is it actually according to having the same gun type of some sort and it's one point higher than a sherman it does have one better hit at long range against tanks very interesting of uh, superior armor two, an attack must beat this unit's defense by two or more in order to score two hits against it. This is where I'd say, no, I don't think so, but maybe it's just because of how this is sloped. It has a very high chance of ricocheting off and away to the top. So is it accurate? I think speed wise, yes. Defense, I would question a little bit again too. And the superior armor two, I'd say, no, that's silly. That's really silly, especially with already a four, three defense. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Gun-wise and stat-wise, it's okay. Overall, I like this vehicle, but it's some things in here just feel a little bit off. So we come to our next Sherman. And this is a beautiful paint job that they did on it. I love it. Uh, I think this might be the only one I have of this type of Sherman. And this is a M4A3-105 Sherman. So this is supposed to be something a little different, and it's uh, I think it's a howitzer on this thing because its stats are very weird. Okay, so let's let's just keep that in mind. Let's see how it stacks up against a Sherman, and it looks like it is a late production Sherman. It's a more boxy front, and that's yep, that is definitely a late production Sherman. So let's let's talk through it a bit. It's got the same speed as a regular Sherman four and a five four defense just like it uh it would have a higher up to 2.5 inches okay so 
Yeah, this makes sense for that five. Again, then that means this shouldn't have five defense. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's yeah let's let's push this up against the Sherman again. Definitely a howitzer gun. This is yeah 105 millimeter howitzer, and we've got something interesting here. The stats against infantry is 11, 11, 9, three extra points. So you're buying this like putting it on the field to kill any infantry and deal with them, which typically you don't think of that for larger vehicles like this, but this is really effective, like really effective. An 11 against infantry is, is massive, but it's anti-tank is very, very bad. So I'm guessing the howitzer just has a much slower uh, speed. And so, eh, not good in that department, but it's good in other ways because of the anti-infantry. So 10, 8, 7, it's not gonna do much against vehicles, but you could harass smaller stuff. Bombardment, this unit's attacks ignore cover. So if a soldier is hiding, this attack ignores the cover. Unfortunately, it doesn't attack both things in a hex, but you can ignore cover for shooting, which is really good. So they don't get a cover roll to try to just get out of it and save themselves. Overall, is this accurate? I'd say yes, because that defense just is too high. Everything about this lines up and it's awesome. Like this is really cool. And you'll just see like 1942, 1944, this thing should not have 5-4 defense if it's supposed to be an early Sherman. Especially the model looks like an early Sherman, but if you look at the picture on here, that looks more uh, boxy on the front up to the top, but yet down at the bottom looks like an early war version of the Sherman. So I don't I don't know. Kind of just always makes you wonder when you study these things out of like they're trying to be accurate-ish, and then sometimes they go, let's just do straight gameplay. So our next one is one last Sherman variant for today. And this is going to be the Sherman Rhino. And as you can tell, it's got something for clearing out like uh, barbed wire, other things like potentially mines, just keeping stuff off of the vehicle. And honestly, those, oh, those side plates are beautiful. This is definitely a late war production version of a Sherman with how it looks. But these are going to cause some interesting issues as far as protection. So overall, really pretty. It's funny whenever you put them up against the the first gen Shermans, just how much more elegant and interesting these are than, than this guy. So they definitely improved as they came out with stuff in the game. Now let's talk about the Sherman Rhino. Sherman Rhino is 26 points. So five points more than the regular Sherman 1944 again. So we are talking about something later in the war, uh, speed of four, five, four defense. Again, that makes sense. We're, we're doing good. Uh, 1311 9 for anti tanks, so it's saying has the same 75 millimeter as the regular Sherman. 997 against infantry, same attacks as the, the regular Sherman. So, what are you paying five extra points for? Brush cutters. This unit can enter forest hexes without making a movement roll, so it can just go in to forests. Cool. That's actually really helpful. Not always, I usually don't take this tank because you just go, you know what, I'm just going to stay out of the forest. It's fine. But, Veteran crew, while this unit, while disrupted, this unit can still move and doesn't suffer the minus one penalty to each attack die. It still suffers the minus one penalty to defense and can't make defensive fire attacks. Uh, you know, here's the thing. These are really hard to show because what this is saying is this is a tank that has been in the field for a long time. And it's not represented directly on the vehicle itself, but it's represented in the people inside of it. And that's really cool. Uh, Sherman typically has a crew of five in, in any version. Um, yeah, I just, I, I love this concept here. It's not a typically a tank that I take to use because eh, paying an extra five points, that's, that's another infantry or two. And that could be used for something that can move around the field independently of another vehicle. And so, that matters. Oh, I just noticed something. Look at that. Look at the paint job that's lacking right there on the tracks. That's funny. I uh, may have to fix that at some point. But I just, this is fascinating because do you really want to pay that extra five points? It's only five points, but it is five points you could use on an infantry to take up a space for something else and potentially shoot down another infantry in the, the battle. I don't know. Overall, I think it's very accurate. Makes sense. The last one. And I actually had to order this separately because I never pulled it when I was playing because it was one of the later sets. And so we stopped buying a lot of them because we got airplanes and we got sick of airplanes. But this is the uh, M7 105mm Priest. It is a beautiful sculpt in its ugliness. And I say that because I, I love actually the uh, 
the M3 Lee design, but this is just straight ugly because it's like taking off the top of it and rearranging a bit and just putting in a big, crazy 105 millimeter artillery gun. Howitzer stuff, it's ridiculous. Uh, it says consisting of a 105 millimeter howitzer on a M3 Lee chassis. The priest got its name from British crews who thought the unconventional gun placement looked like a church pulpit. And I love that. I love that concept that they're just going, yeah, this looks weird and we know it. So we're just going to call it something silly because it looks like somebody is preaching from a, a priest's pulpit. And the uh, the priest is fascinating. Uh, the, the British actually called it the priest typically. And it had a 105 millimeter gun, um, 12 millimeters of armor, 0.47 inches up to 2.44 inches. So it's 0.62 millimeters. This thing is heavily armored actually. And again, if you look up here, the speed is only three and it has 24.84 miles per hour. Uh, let's look at, see what the Sherman, how it compares against the Sherman, the, at least the early war version, because this is supposed to be 1942. So this is around the first gen Sherman's. 23.60 miles per hour. It's faster than the Sherman, and yet it has one less speed. That frustrates me. So that right there is not accurate to what a Sherman is, because a Sherman has a speed of four in this game. And defense-wise, it's got a heavy defense. I think this should at least have a four. At least. Now, granted, it's got an open top, but that should just be a open back right here and and that should be represented in such a way and that's that's really frustrating that annoys me so uh 27 points you do pay a decent amount for this thing but it's 11 10 9 against infantry it is an infantry killer 10 8 7 against vehicles i mean it's got 105 millimeters so it can still do some damage on vehicles but this is where it shines is it's it's an artillery piece if a friendly spotter is within four hexes this indirect fire here is within four hexes of an enemy soldier and has line of sight to it. This unit's attacks against that soldier ignore a line of sight. So as long as you have a spotter, something that's labeled up here with spotter right there, then it can ignore line of sight to shoot at it. Now the spotter is probably going to die, but you can take out something that's harassing your other stuff, like an artillery piece with this thing. This unit's long range is five to 16 hexes. So instead of just eight Maximum for long range, it's actually 16. This thing's massively strong. Bombardment, this is unit's attacks ignore cover. They don't get a cover roll. Uh, fixed power, so you can only attack units in front of it. Makes perfect sense, but you're going to be hiding it in the back anyway. Open back, enemy units can use their anti-soldier attack values when attacking this unit from behind. So uh, vehicles like aircraft just absolutely wreck this thing. And that's why we kind of got frustrated playing them because they can just, in this game, spawn in anywhere. There's not like, all right, you have a speed of seven and you can move from your spot, which really is what it should be is something like that is a much faster vehicle. And that way, well, that way you could just protect some of this stuff and you go, okay, there's planes coming from the enemy lines rather than just, they pop in from nowhere. That's very, very frustrating. And it means you can't protect things like this that you need to. Um, yeah. Uh, Overall, should have one more speed, should have one more defense on the front. Everything else, I think, totally works on this thing because it is an artillery piece designed to just uh, tilt that bad boy up and fire at the opponent. Overall, beautiful. I think it's a little plain inside of the, the you know, the main area right here. But really great model. Uh, other than the speed and the defense, I think it's very accurate as far as what it would accomplish. Uh the one thing I would say, I think it may need, I, I guess one other critique, it should maybe one more attack against vehicles because unlike uh, the Sherman over here with the 105 millimeter howitzer, this thing is not shooting straight at you typically. It's shooting up and overarching onto it, which usually would mean hitting armor on the top of your vehicle, not in the front where usually it's flat and also causing... Um, usually less armor. So there, there should be a little bit more reflected there for anti-vehicle, I would say, just because of what this thing is supposed to do. But let me know down in the comments below, which vehicle was your favorite that we talked about? Which one did you feel didn't line up at all to accuracy? Which one did you feel was 100% on point, if at all? And which one you just love to see? Have you ever played Axis Allies Miniatures? If you haven't, I highly recommend it. Aircraft, I would say, just be careful with because they just get a little silly. But otherwise, the game is fantastic. But I've been Cody from the Keepers of Nerddom. Take care and have a great day.